I got a dot for you on me, I'm feeling good The streets talking to me in the hood I'm doing this exactly how I should What's not said is understood Listen to me, I'm on my grind No matter what, these haters mad I gotta ask, why you mad at us? Cause I'm on the rise Yeah, I'm on the rise The party won't even get lit until Yo, 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 season two, episode five Y'all, we gonna get right into it, okay? Here's what we talking about this week we talk about controlling what you can control because a lot of us go through adversity and it's kind of hard to get through it. OK, so we got a special guest for that. Before we get into that, make sure you all like, comment, share, subscribe, show love, rate it on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, whatever you watching or listening on. Show love. All right. That's all we ask. You know what I'm saying? We ain't even ask for no no money. We ain't ask you all to show up somewhere, pull up somewhere. If you here right now listening or watching, it ain't nothing to hit that like button. So go ahead. Show some love. Um, also want to give a special thanks to all the support that we begin special thanks to, you know, any tips, any advice, any people that have been supporting us in terms of, uh, getting paperwork done, you know what I'm saying? With our project. So we appreciate everybody that's been kind of wrapping their arms around us. Uh, climber of the week. I'll let Jovan go ahead and handle that one and then we'll move on. Yes. So our climber, of the re- climber of the week is Mariah. Paparella, she is the executive director of charity, not a charity, charity. And what she does charity. is she helps young men and charity. So she helps young men and women who are aging out of foster care. Uh, by the time they're 18 that don't have a foster home or whatever, she helps them uh, make their house feel like a home. So what they do is they help furnish um, their home, mattresses, dressers, whatever they may need um, in the process of their transition as they age out and um, mature into adulthood. Yeah. So big, big, big shout out to her. Hopefully we get her. Hopefully we get her on the uh, podcast one day, and I look forward to uh, speaking with her soon. Yeah. Um. You know, just and from my perspective, um, I've I've heard a lot about about her. Um, I would love to meet her. You know, Jovan's told me a lot, so I think it's a great great initiative. Um, and I definitely am interested to hear more from her. So, yeah. big shout out to them. Um, yeah. Right in Akron, Ohio. See, I didn't even know that. Okay. Yep. I thought they was in, I knew they was in Ohio, but I thought they was in like the Cleveland area, but that's hard. That's hard. Yep, they service in Akron, Ohio too. Ooh, wee. Okay. Okay. So, great um, initiative. Quick little motivation for y'all and then we'll get right into it. All right. So, you know, we, we talked about it at the end of the episode. This is something that we want to instill in everybody's mind. All right. I'm keep, I'm going to keep saying it, y'all. Success is at the top of the mountain. Listen, remember that success will always be at the top of the mountain and it ain't ever going to roll down to you. What does that mean? That means there's no handouts in life, right? You got to earn everything you want. So you got to climb up and go get that success. It's not going to roll down to the bottom of the mountain for you. Go climb up, go get it. All right. Now we got a special climber on this episode. This is my brother. You know what I'm saying? This is my guy. You know what I'm saying? My guy from over the sky. No, nah, over the sea. Anyway, no, nah, this is my cutty. Um, my boy, Bailey, Bailey Flint. Okay. Old teammate, forever brother. Um, we'll go ahead and let you introduce yourself, Bailey. We're going to get right into it, man. We got a special guy to talk about how to control what you can control. So let's go ahead and hear from you, man. Yep. So Bailey Flint, uh, I'm from Australia originally, and I've been uh, back and forth from Australia and America since I was about 17. Uh, went over to Utah, back to Australia, then came over here for college. That's where I met Bryce and played uh, at the University of Toledo. And then since then, uh, got done with my degree and I've moved out to California now and I'm pursuing football still uh, whilst also starting to kind of lay my foundation uh, within the arts and, yeah, just see where it all takes me. Period, man. Period. All the arts, too, except for drawing. My cutie don't draw, but we're going to get into that, all right? So um, as we as we transition, man, you know, you kind of talked about your, your journey. And before we even talk about controlling what you can control, I think people need to understand your story, right? I know a little bit. I know a lot. Okay. But maybe I might even be able to learn something in this conversation. So let's start with just your early childhood, man. Um, Anything that you want to share regarding, you know, how you were brought up, how you were raised, what lessons you learned and what kind of helped set the foundation for your life. um, Good and bad. Yeah, definitely. So I think uh, I come from a reasonably low socioeconomic area in Australia, uh, outside of Melbourne. It's about 30, 35, or probably actually 40 minutes, uh, you know, outside of the main city in the Western suburbs. And, uh, you know, so I grew up a suburbs kid, 
right on the cusp of being like countryside, you know, so we we're right out there. We were in the cut. And uh, the, the great thing was anytime you never had to worry about falling asleep on the train because, well, the last stop <laughs> doesn't go any further. So <laughs> they'll kick you off by the time you get there. So that was always a good thing. But, you know, growing up in that environment, um, you know, the, the big thing in Australia is that, uh, especially when you're there, a lot of people will leave school early and begin to get a trade. And I always thought that was what I was going to do. And I wasn't really too sure. Um, exactly what was going to go on, you know, at the time I was, a, a, you know, no one in my family had, uh, had graduated high school. So it was like, that's just what you do. You know, I had an older brother. Um, he dropped out, you know, in, in, in 10th grade, uh, went and started working. And then I kind of got really, really close to doing so uh, myself. And one of the things that kind of kept me in, um, in school, funnily enough, was computer games because, I remember saying to my mom, like, oh, yeah, I wanna, I'm going to drop out. Like, I want to go, I want to start working. She's like, that's fine. You can do that if you want. But there's no more playing computer games all night. Like, you got you to go, you gotta go to work, mate. Like, you're going to, you know, there's, no, there's none of this. I said, no, nah, no, couldn't, couldn't be me. So I'm going to school. <laughs> so I just stuck it out. Um, and, you know, I was always, I was always like, not super motivated towards anything. I could ne I never found my thing growing up, you know, like I was just trying a lot of different things and I was, my mum was super supportive, supportive of, you know, me trying all these different things. I tried basketball and I was like, oh, I didn't like it. It was just like these real little things. Like I think the coach had yelled at me and I was like, no, nah, don't do it anymore. You know, <laughs> I did, I, I did say, you know, I did jujitsu for a couple of years with my brother and I go to a competition one time and like, um, you know, I just had a bad experience at that competition because like I, I, I felt like I won. I thought I tapped the guy, so I let go of the choke and then he put me in an armbar and I lost. And I was like, what is going on? Like, I just won. Like, I should be standing right. Oh, I hated the kid. But, you know, and then I was like, I lost my motivation for that. And I just never found my thing, you know? Um, so like there's what, what I'm getting at is like the, the um, you got to really just keep trying everything until you find your thing. Because once I did find my thing, I've just been laser focused, which you've seen over the last five years um, at achieving, you know, achieving that. Jovan, man, I ain't gonna lie. When Bailey was talking about that, I was thinking about you, dude. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be the one to tell the story, but just thinking about you and your childhood sound real similar just in terms of like you try. Okay. So like funny story, y'all, like me and Jovan was on the same football team back in like third grade. Like we was Way little back. boys, man. I seen Joe Vaughn for two days before I knew it. I ain't seen Joe Vaughn for like four more years. <laughs> Listen, man, I, I was I was overweight. They was talking about some heels and bear crawling. I started wheezing. I, <laughs> I had a mom ask me if I wanted to go to the hospital. I said, yo. <laughs> I said, I'm not doing this no more. I'm not doing this no more. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, like my journey uh, is very similar, like going through like finding different things. Like I thought I was going to be a wrestler. I was like, man, I want, I want to do this, go to college, whatever. And then Bryce put me in the football. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm doing this now. You know what I mean? So Jovan played yeah. basketball before he played football, man. Hey, another funny story. I actually took Bryce's spot. Oh yeah, and on, on the basketball team, it was Ooh. funny. He was so uh, he had a relationship with the basketball coach, and um, so he was like, all right, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you at tryouts, or whatever. He didn't come to tryouts. He had, I think, you had practice maybe with football or something. It was like a conflict of whatever he had going on. And I ended up going, he thought I was Bryce, but I was actually doing well. I was hustling, you feel me? I was a hustle guy, but I could get the rebounds, put the thing back. And he was like, yeah, you want a team? He said, Jovan, he said, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, man, that's That's I'm hilarious, doing. man. So, so Bailey, man, you, so you, you, you went through all of these things, you know what I'm saying? Even with the sports, you know what I'm saying? Even with the video games, right? Really just going through. At that time, you know, soul searching, trying to figure out what you want to do. Um, and then came that transition to the United States. So talk to me a little bit about how that transition even came about. What the decision kind of was based off. Uh, was it your mom? What what, what was it? Because I don't even know that part. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So basically, I was, um, I was at school one day. My friend Trey came up to me and I wasn't playing anything at the time, like sports wise. And he was like, hey, come down and let's play American football. And I was like, that sounds really cool, but I'm good, bro. Like, I ain't trying to get hit. Like, I, I don't want that. Like, I don't need that. Like, I'll play rugby with those guys at, like, you know, during breaks at school. And it's like, man, you got to be, 
you got to be ready to go because they, they don't play. I was like, man, you put helmets on them. That's not going to help you. That's, they're just going to hit harder. I was like, no, nah, I'm cool. And uh, I ended up telling my mom that my mate had told me about this and, and, and all that stuff. And she really wanted me to be doing something at the time because I was just literally just playing computer games and riding my skateboard to school. Like, that was it. And she ended up uh, calling up the coach and, you know, getting me a, get me a spot in that training session because they needed guys. I come home. She's like, yeah, what are you doing on, on, uh, on Sunday? And I was like, I don't know, recovering from a hangover. Like, I <laughs> she says, well, you're going to be on practice. And I was like, what? I was like, no, nah, it's too far. I can't get there. She's like, don't worry. We'll get you there. And I was like, oh, my gosh. She said, no, like, no, no. Oh. We ain't hearing none of that. <laughs> I was like, oh. But I ended up going down there and uh, I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. The uh, I didn't have any football boots, like cleats. I had to wear the coach's football cleats. I had like, I was squished into like size 11 and uh, 10 and a half. So my feet were just absolutely just cramped. The, the shoulder pads didn't have a strap on them and the helmet was too big. I was like, this sucks. This sucks. This sport sucks. And, and um, you know, because I got, I got whacked a couple of times too. And like, I'm, I'm getting hit twice. I'm getting hit one time and then I'm hitting my helmet. Yeah, you know, that thing was so big on my head. It was a literal bubble, literal bubble head. But I go home and there's mom with the puppy dog eyes. How was it? I was like, it was all right. I hated it. I was t- telling myself the whole ride home. How am I going to tell her that I ain't going back? What I got to say to like tell her I'm never going back? <laughs> She's like, so you're going to go back? And I was like, oh, I mean, yeah, I'll give you one more. <laughs> <laughs> and then we ended up, uh, we ended up going and then I got a pair of boots that fit me and then the, we got a different pair of shoulder pads from this guy. He like lent me, lent them to me. And I got a helmet to fit, and I was like, "All right, this ain't that bad." And then I started just doing what. And mind you, I was playing corner at this time as well. Oh shoot! So like, I, I was looking like I was Womack. <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't. I wasn't really big, mind you, as well. Like when I this is like I'm like 17. It would have been like 16, 17, yeah, 17. I think I was like 170 pounds. I was just tall and skinny. And, um, you know, not like a freak athlete athlete or anything like that. Sort of like learning my body because I'm just so clumsy. And, you know, I, I go and we start playing games and we, we win every game. We don't lose a game. Now, there's only six teams in the, uh, in the conference, but still this other team is supposed to be the team. And uh, when we played against them, um, I'm pretty sure they beat us by like a, a field goal, but I wasn't in that game. Uh, I wasn't playing that game. I'd done something to my knee that week, so I just kind of sat out. But we go and we won the championship. And I was like, this is the first time I've ever won a championship. This is awesome. I love this. Like, this is this is what I want to do now. I want to play this game. That was in the juniors division. Well, then the seniors division was like, we'll have you come play if you can put some weight on. You're too small. Because the seniors is, it's it's like below 18 and then it's 18 plus. And they take that literal. Like, our, our starting middle linebacker was our head coach. And he was like 50. Hmm. Like, no way. You he was a hit of it. Hey, dude was a hitter. No, I swear, Bryce, I will send you the photos. Yeah, it's it's crazy. And your head, like, wait, I, your head coach was your middle linebacker. He played middle linebacker. Yep. Hey, yo, I'm That's finna crazy. go. I'm finna go be the head like, coach for that league and be the center and be like, hey, yo, we running this. They struggle, bro. They struggle. He played for himself. <laughs> right. I would. I would. Uh, I would drive to games with Eli. Right. It's one of the guys that one of the D linemen, and I'd be, I'd be in the middle in the back like this. And on either side, there's a, there's two baby seats with these kids and these wives in the front seat. Like, you know, like we're <laughs> 17, like just, oh, oh my God. So now what I, what I like attribute to that is, okay, I was just thrown into this environment of like all these guys way older than me that are working, that are like, their dream is like football, football, football. But now they see somebody who's actually of age that could achieve this dream. So what do they do? Well, they pour everything they have into me. They give me as much advice, as much help as possible. Uh, picking me up to take me to practice so I would be able to get there, all this sort of stuff, supporting me in any way, shape, or form. Uh, it comes to, I, I got an opportunity to play for Australia in the Down Under Bowl, and I went and did that. And then when I did that, I had an opportunity um, and got an offer to go to boarding school in Utah. But they said, hey, you're a big boy, big frame-wise. Can you put some weight on? I was like, yeah. They're like, but like a lot of weight. And I was like, Okay, like how much are we talking here? And I'd already put on a bit. So I was 170 and I like put on a, a lot of weight. So I was like closer to like 200, 220, like around that range. Um, but yeah, no, they wanted me to go up. So I played right tackle in DN. I went up to 260. 
uh, I was I was a big boy. No, I haven't seen the film. He not bad, y'all. He not bad at tackle. Real life, like I'm not even just saying that. I know that's. I didn't know that. I'll, 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 I'll get a pasta that right now. You want? Like, uh, <laughs> nah, <he can> <laughs> <laughs> nah, but no, but you yeah. really will though. <laughs> okay no <laughs> the uh that's fun the um you know going over there and doing that that just made the the hunger for like wanting to play football now just like so much more right mm -hmm. so i ended up um you know going through that season and i started talking to some schools um I spoke to georgia southern and southern utah and like i was i was about to go to these schools and uh you know have an offer have an offer to go um southern utah had called me up and they they offered me to play right tackle well <laughs> as long as uh my grades passed through it was good to go like i was set and i my grades didn't go Six, 14 out of 16 credits for the ncaa so i would have been eligible to play so i had to do the juco route which i was like all right well if i'm gonna like grind through this you know we got to see what's up so i went out to california I did the Juco route and then I realized, wait a second, I'm 260. I'm not going to be able to compete unless I'm 300, 310. I was like, oof. And I need to be way stronger than what I'm at right now. And I'm in this Juco program. I'm like, a lot of this is on me. Like, I don't know how much support I'm going to get. And then two two major, major things came. One was when I had a meeting with a person connected to the football team that offered steroids basically to was just like you know what we can get you strong we can do it really quick uh and you know i, I thought about it because i was like man i got the frame on me i was like that no i go play d1 you know but at the time i'm 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 18 years old i'm 18 years old and i got these people that are like yeah you're going d1 if you do this because i just i'm so broad that like if i did something like that i'd be huge you know whether or not i could play i don't know you know at that level but, you know, I decided against that and then also, you know, had some stuff going back home. So I went back to Australia and I kind of I kind of gave up the dream of football, but I still just, it was just the back of my head, just really wanted to do it, you know? There's no way I was going to be able to go play D-line or anything like that uh, or O-line anymore um, from Australia. But I reached out to a friend of mine, Jordan Berry, who punted for five years for the Steelers and last year he was with the uh, Vikings. And was just like, hey, how'd you do it? You know, because I realized that he was over and was talking to some people, and he was a punter. So he went to an academy called Pro Kick Australia, and I ended up going there as well. And they basically helped facilitate like what I needed to do for my grades, what I needed to do for punting, and helped me get over there. At the same time, I was working with some of my best mates on on dropping the weight. So I got down to you know two forty. I was like like two two sixty. I got down to like two thirty. Sorry, when I came over to Toledo. Um, but yeah, so I, I was able to make that sort of transition there. Um, and that's kind of how, how I got to, got to Toledo. Mm -hmm. right. So it was a, like a developmental program overseas, right? Like in Australia? Yep. Yeah. Cause I'm asking that cause I have a lot of, um, students that I work with, um, at Temple that has been through a similar program, but they're from Sweden. Okay. Um, and they have like a huge, like a funnel. We have like four kids from Sweden. Oh, wow. Um, I think we're actually down like two now, but. It's like this kind of similar program, um, but like, what's that transition like? Because I never hear like from my from them being my teammates and work and, and working now with a lot of international students. I never hear them talk about like, you know, like being homesick, which I know is there. But like, oh, what's mate. that transition like from uh, just being homesick and even the culture shock from just coming from Australia to America? Biggest thing I've seen first of all when we talk about the homesickness is the ones that get the worst homesickness don't last; they go home. You know, like I've seen, I've seen four or five guys come over here, you know, all over the country, not to like Toledo, but like all over the country and they couldn't do it. You know, they, they, they got to go. I mean, I left, I left home when I was 17. I kind of figured out how to live by myself, you know. Um, I still talk to my mom just about every day. I'm always on FaceTime with my siblings and my grandmother and, you know, always just video calling and stuff. So it's like I'm there. I haven't been home for four years. Like I, I've not set foot in Australia. I don't know what like the area, the area that I grew up in. I don't know what it looks like anymore because it's it like so much. I can guarantee that. Oh, a hundred percent. Man, I come you home know, from like, Akron. I, when I was in Toledo, I would come home, and it'd be like, oh wait, wait, hold on, wait. Oh, what is oh, that? Change? Wait. 
Yeah. I know. Four years of never even seeing it. Yeah. I, this is the other crazy part. Like, I have, I have siblings that I haven't seen in four years. Mm-hmm. Like, at like a, and, and, and um, cousins and stuff that are really, really young. So, like, I'm going to see them and I've got cousins that couldn't talk when I left and now can have a, can hold a conversation. That's weird. Yeah. That is you know, weird. like, that's like, oh my gosh, like, I held you as an infant. Now you're going to be running around, like, you know, being a pain in the ass. Like, <laughs> so just to interject real quick, my question is, do you have a plan on going back? Like maybe Christmas or is, is are you not really stressed out about it right now? I am pressed. I am pressed. I'm, I'm not pressed because where I'm at right now, see the way, the way my life's kind of sorted right now, you know, at the moment, I don't know what's yeah. happening tomorrow, you know, yeah. like, but I got to be ready. You know, it's better to be uh, ready for nothing than not ready when something happens. And if I get a call from the NFL for a workout and I'm in Australia, well, I'm going to feel real stupid. Yeah. Yeah. But That's- then people will be like, well, what happens if I don't get a call all season for a single workout and I could have went home? I mean, the controllables right right no facts and that's yeah that that process the where you that that's that soft spot you're in right now just waiting for a phone call is so unsettling I, I'm, I'm in limbo it. i'm in limbo yeah you're just constantly adapting like oh like i, I talked about my journey a little bit when i don't think i talked about because i'm going to bring this up on the 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 weight episode where i had an issue with um, when I was with the Chiefs and I had something like my, I was a little overweight not as much as they, they said I was and I, I went in to the Browns and they were like listen if you could make this weight whatever you can you can join the team yeah. and I was like oh, I can make that today mind you I was like 10 pounds over that weight so I went to the I went to the gym lost the weight real quick and then came to the Browns they drove me out whatever went there made the weight Went there for a week, two weeks, got cut. I'm like, I did all that just to get cut and then go into a, then work out with the Patriots and then possibly work. So it's like constantly evolving, constantly adapting. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it takes a lot, but it's going to be worth it though at the end of the day. Well, because you know what? And this is one thing. I got some really, like this whole off season, I've been working with mostly just pro guys and not guys that are like just getting into the league, like guys that have been like Jason Myers has been, um, he's the kicker for, for Seattle. He's been in the NFL for eight years. Yeah. So I've had him kind of guiding me um, and being able to just pick his brain for like what's going on. He's like, dude, I was, you know, he was working a, a, a crappy job for, for three years and just, just grinding by, just scraping by, you know, for three years. And then he got to pick up for us. We can, you know, I could, I could not see, you know, see a field at all for two years and still be considered to play as long as I stay training and stuff. Cause it's, it's much easier, you know, cause there's no, no other person, you know, it's like, it's me and a couple of footballs in a park and I can train. Like I went punted this morning, like, you know, just, just staying ready, but it is so, so, you know, um, intense all the time. Cause you never know when it's going to happen and everyone keeps saying it, but the, the, it's, it's going to come right as you're about to give up. Yep. So I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm quitting. I'm quitting today. I'm quitting today. <laughs> you know, <laughs> start calling. <going. laughs> and then, uh, but it's so true because it actually happened to me. Um, you know, last, last week or a couple of weeks ago, I was like looking at some job opportunities I had in front of me and I was like, oof, I could take this right now. I could sit real, I could sit real sweet, start making some real good money, but I'd have to completely quit football. And I was like, let me sleep on it. I'll think about it. And I was, I was thinking about it. I was like, all right, well, if I did this, like, how would I feel in 10 years like that? I was going through that. And I was like, man, I wouldn't care if I got that much money, you know? And uh, I get up in the morning and I get a call from my agent. Green Bay is flying you out. All right. I was like, well, that's a sign that I needed. You know, like they didn't even sign. They didn't even sign any punter. You know, they had three of us go out there and punt and they didn't even sign any. They just wanted to see us. I was like, all right, sweet. Like, cool. Had lunch with Aaron Rodgers. Like, (laughs) not with him. He was like at a different table, but I saw him. You ate ate lunch lunch with him, though, bro. You ate lunch with him. I ate lunch with him, though. Yeah, you know, back when I I saw one day I was with the Packers, you know what I'm saying? I ate lunch with Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. yeah. But, (laughs) but, 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 um, with, with that being, all that being said, though, man, I mean, that's a perfect, perfect testimony of like literally controlling what you can control. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, um, you know, everything that you're going through right now has got me thinking about, you know, some of the things that you've gone through at Toledo, some of the things you've gone through here uh, right now. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
And I'm just going to ask you a direct question. You know what I'm saying? I know Jovan has something to say, too. I kind of heard you, Joe, but literally directly, bro, like right now, you know what I'm saying, in, in present time, what are some things that you feel like you can control? And I'm asking you this for any any young viewers that don't really know how to control what they can control, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? This is a guy, guys, to fill y'all in. Like, this is a guy that's been through a lot. You know what I'm saying? Y'all even gotten to hear the full story, but this is a guy that's been through a lot. This is a guy that's worked his tail off to bounce back. This is a guy that's worked his tail off to make it to the next level, right? Similar to me, you know what I'm saying? But he's still got a chance. He's still fighting for it, right? Um, and this is a guy that got some other stuff going on too with, with uh, his work in the arts. So what are some things that you can control when things are going the way that you have planned it, Bailey, like right now? I think a, I think a really cool um, sort of visualization, like visualization sort of task or whatever you want to call it that you can do is, and this is what I do all the time, like if I'm ever kind of struggling a little bit, but like you think about the situation that's around you and you think about what control you have over that, right? And initially people go, okay, well, this person doesn't like me very much, so I can just change the way they think. And that there is like completely false because people think that you can change the way. Like, and I, I've used this example to you and, um, and, and for you guys with your given circumstances in life, being like African-American men, you understand this. If somebody is racist, they're not going to like you. That, that just is what it is. Like if they're truly racist at their heart. So now, you know, how do you, if you, if you can't change their mindset on you, why can you change this other person's mindset on you, right? Yep. Other people's uh, thoughts and stuff like that, they're, they're their own and you have no control over that. Stop, stop, stop doing this because you got me thinking about Umar. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and this is a serious conversation. We take some. <laughs> and you just got you just doing this. You talking about African American? Look, <laughs> stop. Because I know you're not doing it on purpose, but you just got to stop doing this because you got me laughing. Because me and Bailey got okay. an inside joke about this. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, man. Uh, Go ahead. But you know, so like you gotta you gotta look at it. This is you, you literally take a piece of paper and you draw a circle, and in the middle of the circle, uh, you, you write your name and. You, you write the things that you can control. Okay, well, I can control the time I wake up. I can control the food that I eat. I can control the thoughts that I have and the words that I say, right? Um, you know, people don't understand how big, of, how big those things are. The thoughts that you have and, and the words that you say, how big they are because you have a conscious and a subconscious and your subconscious can't tell the difference. You know, if, if, if you're always saying that you're an idiot and da-da-da-da, you, your brain's going to believe that, Right. That's why they say words of affirmation, looking yourself in the mirror, like literally and saying these things out loud might sound crazy, but if you do them enough, they actually work. Um, I believe that, you know, I do that myself. Um, and I stop people when I hear them saying something like, oh, I'm an idiot. Don't say that. Your brain doesn't know the difference, you know? And that's what that, you know, you, you look at, um, I think about it like this. People say, oh, your brain's so smart. How can it not decipher the difference? Well, you think about people that are really, really smart. What are they usually not? Not very like socially like, great you know, you have so much of one thing, you're going to miss out on something else. So you've got yourself in that middle of the circle. On the outside of the circle is everything you can't. Other people's attitude towards you. But also what goes outside of that circle is the weather, whether or not it's going to rain. When you, can un when you understand that you have as much control over whether or not it's going to rain today, over how that person thinks about you, man, you become real powerful in your own mind. Because that's the whole like, ah, oh, don't even worry about that. Because if, if you worry about that, you're just wasting bandwidth. Yep. It's, it's your own bandwidth, you know? And every day they say you got, every day you got however many, you know, million seconds in a day, you know, like all that sort of stuff. And it's like, well, you're going to, you're going to waste all 86, these 86,400. There you go. You know? I think so. So like, so like, you know, they're like, well, would you waste, you know, if, if somebody, you know, I forget the story. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. But like when they say like, oh, if somebody wasted $10 on you, would you spend $80,000 to, um, you know, to get that $10 back or whatever it is? And it's like, no, you wouldn't. So it's like, well, why are you worrying about this other stuff? You know, I mean, control the controllables. Like yeah. if you can do it, do it. If you can't, accept it. Mm -hmm. The longer you, you, you try and you linger around like worrying about these sorts of things, it's like, what the heck? I think about it like I literally have, I say it out loud to myself all the time. When I, did, when I went to Pittsburgh, I really thought there was a chance I was going to get signed. They had two punters. I spoke to them. They were like, yeah, that's the guy you're competing against. Like, 
you know, if, if, if you do really well, like we're going to sign you over him. And in the end, it didn't work out. I was like, all right. And I, I was like so confused. I was like, I really felt like I did quite good. I punted really well. I can't kick off. That guy can kick off. It's like so, it's so simple. Yeah. We could have been just as good as punters as, as each other. Um, I've never actually seen him punt, so I couldn't, I couldn't talk on that. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to say, you know, I think I'm the best compared to anyone. You got to have that, you know, you got to have that mindset um, or else you got no chance at all. But, you know, <clears throat> I was sitting in the hotel room when I realized, when I, when I got the call saying that I'm not being signed, I was all right, that sucks. Now I've got a red eye flight back to California. I'm going to get back late as heck. I was like, so what am I going to do? Just like powder around and sit in this hotel and miss that flight and all this sort of stuff. And then I get to the, I get to the airport and there's a delay and there's all this sort of stuff. And I was like, Oh, that sucks. Mm. <laughs> you know, like control. I, there's nothing I can do about this, you know? So I was like, well, I better, better get comfortable. You know, you gotta, you gotta figure out these, these little things because if I let that affect me, well then now that's just destroyed my entire week. Instead, I had a positive attitude, got back, got back late, went straight to bed, got up the next day, went to the gym. Cause I was like, another opportunity is going to come. I don't know when, but it's going to happen. Yeah. This is, this sport especially, like it's really, it really comes down to like, who's the first one that's going to quit. You guys yeah. know, this. you guys know this in the start of the game, you against the D lineman, they're, you're both ready to go. Now who's going to keep going all the way to the fourth quarter. Who's going to quit first. Cause as soon as that guy quits, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. You know, I've had those yeah. conversations at a game, Bryce, and you're like, I got him. I, it's done. I've got him now. And then you yep. every play. Mwah! Mwah! <laughs> I tell I tell my players this all the time, man. If y'all hear a lot of background noise, excuse me, I got to charge my laptop. But I, I mean, I, I tell my players that all the time because you know I'm coaching now, man. And when we doing conditioning and stuff, man, you know what I'm saying? Them boys start huffing and puffing. Bending over and leaned over. I'm like, dude, y'all doing this now. Y'all going to be bent over and leaned over in the game. And you know what you're telling your, your opponent? Yeah, I gave up. I'm done, right? Like, mm -hmm. same thing with on, on, on the football field. You, all, you Two things you can always control, your attitude and your effort. Don't matter how tired you are, you can always control that effort, man. So Shoot, That's life. Yeah, man. So that's what I be trying to tell them. That's exactly what I be trying to tell them. I I like, I think about this so much. Like if, if I could take my mindset with me and, and everyone says this and no, no kid wants to listen ever. Every kid knows the most. They, they, they know it all. But like, if you could really go back and have the attitude that I have now and understanding that I have now, when I was 15, I'm going to the league. I know, I know this. Like, I know this for a fact, I'm getting drafted. I'm going to be one of the best ever. Because I can look back, confidently look back on my college career and be like, oh, I didn't give enough there. I folded there. Oh, wow. I really thought that going out to that party was sweet. I really thought doing this was cool. But I, that was, that was great. You know, like what? Two hours of fun. And now I, now I don't have a beach house, you know, for 10 years of fun because right. of that, you know, because right. of that decision. Now, I think... I've, I'm I'm in a position where I'm going to be okay anyway, um, and I'm still really going to have an opportunity to get that beach house. But could have had it sooner, or could have had it in a different path, or the path that I thought I was going to have, you know. And also, like understanding failure is another big thing. Like with the whole control the controllables, like there you go. That's something you can control. You can control the fact that you know you need to have a good attitude when you fail because you're you're going to fail. It doesn't matter how good you are, Bryce. You you know. You think about like I, so I talked to you after my pro day. I had one. Of, I, they told me that was one of the best punting performances they had seen. One, like one of the scouts told me this, mm -hmm. and I know that it would have had to have been because I was looking at the stats that I kicked, and I mean I, I kicked all the footballs. Like I killed grouse. the football. It was grass. It was grass. It was Mickey. It was Mickey. You know? <laughs> it was the best thing since last year. I don't learn Australian terms, y'all. It was Mickey. But. You know, I, I didn't I didn't get signed. Like I didn't get signed after the draft. And I was like, what's going on? You know, I had I still got um picked up for the Steelers, you know. Uh, you know, a couple of weeks, what is it, a week or two after the draft for the minicamp, but you know, like 
I was like, man, like what's going on here? You know, and if I, if I'd gotten into my, you know, into my head and, and, and felt really bad for myself and all that stuff, like would have been over, but yeah. it wasn't, you know, I got, I figured it out kind of. What about, what about the, the, the same topic, different perspective. Okay. You talked a lot about things that sometimes there's times where, man, like, I don't know why I'm in this situation right now. I did my best. Like I thought I did yeah. really good. Right. But hey, control the controllables is what it is. Got to bounce back. Right. What about the times? What about the situations where it seems like there's no way out and it's not a failure. It's a straight up like downfall. Right. Straight up downfall. OK, like the type of stuff that people don't recover from, the type of stuff that your mind is telling you it's over. Right. And myself, myself included. Okay, yeah. could I have kept fighting for the NFL? Do I want to be a football player? Yeah, I love football, right? But even myself, man, like, could I have kept fighting? Possibly, but man, that knee was talking, <laughs> that knee was begging. You know what I'm saying? So, I chose to back out, right? But I could have kept fighting. I could have controlled what I can control and been like, you know what? Yeah, I miss pro day, right? But I chose to finally take that step. But for yeah. somebody like you, I'm just thinking, you know what I'm saying, of the message for anybody listening that needs to hear it when there's there looks like there is no way to, to win somebody like you senior year, right. Or junior year at the time, whatever it was, breaks the ankle, right. Breaks the messes up the foot bad. Okay. You're your baby. You know what I'm saying? Whether it was your kicking foot or your plant foot, those are your, those are your babies as a punter. So somebody mm-hmm. like you, who's gone through that, who had to miss out on a season, right. In the middle of a great year, how do you bounce back from that? How do you tell yourself, hey, man, got to control what I can control? How do you do that in that, in that moment? Because there's so many people that would give up. Yeah. Understanding perspective. Not both of them to get like understanding and perspective, two separate entities. You know, understanding like what is happening around you <clears throat> and making sure you have the best perspective of the situation. Because, you know, things might be, going down for you you might be heading towards rock bottom and all that sort of stuff you need to be able to answer the question why and if you can't answer the question why then you need to look into yourself and realize why can't i ask or answer that question there's 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 always a there's always an answer you know to, to everything there's always an answer um down to the the most the most random things it's just um, you know, you might think, well, why did this happen? And why did this person do this to me? And da, 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 da. There's no reason why they would have done that. Well, there's no reason that you can understand right now, but this could have, somebody else could have done something to them. That's why they do it to you. And da, 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 da. That is the why, you know, but if you can, if you can understand those things and then if you can understand what's going on and then have the correct perspective over the situation, then you're in a good position. So I was like, okay, well, what's going on with my ankle? You know, the understanding was I'm done for the season. Um, I've really, really damaged my ankle to a point where they're not sure if I'm going to be able to play again. Um, the perspective turned into, okay, well, they're saying that there's a chance that I can't play again, but that also means there's a chance I can. And if I do everything right, like we'll be good to go. I was like, okay, I've seen other guys get hurt before. I've seen what they do. I've been around the team. I've been around the environment. I, I know what sort of people we're dealing with in terms of college students, you know, eating, whatever, partying, drinking. All right, I'm hurt. It's all right. My body will fix it. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, well, what happens if a 40-year-old gets hurt? Well, he has to change absolutely everything in his diet and everything because his body isn't young anymore. I was like, well, what happens if I act like that? Well, then I might have a chance to get back, you know, so little things like keeping my foot elevated all the time, increasing the amount of turmeric I was consuming in my diet so that the swelling would go down fast enough so that they could, you know, see what was going on. Doing research over the actual issue that I had with my ankle, you know, why, you know, watching and asking questions to Sarah. She said, she's like, I appreciate that you actually ask what, why we're doing something. And I was like, yeah, because if I want to do this myself, I want to know if I have a deficiency in this, that means I can do this exercise to get that, you know, understanding like you know getting that getting a better perspective on it all and now i'm in a now i'm a driver instead of a passenger right Mm -hmm. now i'm driving the outcome rather than just 
I'm just here for the ride. Where a lot yep. of people just come along for the ride, especially when they're going down, you know? Yep. Yep. Just especially. down for the ride, hopping in a passenger seat, letting whatever happened happen, not taking accountability of what they can control and just saying everything is out of their control. So that's exactly. correct. That's it's like it's like that's when you say when you say you got the driver's seat, man, it's like, yeah, you can't control the fact that the brakes went out, but you can hit the e brake, right? Or you can swerve out of traffic. You know what I'm saying? You can stay in the driver's seat without having full control. There may be right. some things in life that that's just not going your way. But that don't mean you just be like, oh well, guess I'm dead. Just gotta drive down, roll down a hill without touching the wheel. Honestly, it's honestly such a good sort of thing to think about because it's like, okay, if you're the driver, you can control what's going on. And sometimes people feel like they're the passenger, right? They're in the, the they're in the passenger seat. Well, if you're in the passenger seat, you know what you can do? You can still open the door, you can open the window, you can pull the e-brake, right? And you can swerve because you could rip them out of the out of the seat. And then you go, all right, well, maybe maybe you feel like you're in the back seat. I can still open the window, I can still open the door. Well, maybe it's child locker in your back seat. Well, now you're in trouble. You bet, you know. <laughs> and then and then and then some people some people I get it. They think they're in the trunk. But it's always it's always a way to get out. There's always a way to get. Out. Take your seatbelt off, bang it against a window. You're out. You're at the window. You know what, what I mean. What are you you're tied up? What are you tied like, up in a handcuffs? Okay, you in tied a up in handcuffs in the trunk. Mouth mouth closed. You can't scream. With big Tyski sitting on the trunk. Now, all right. Now it's safe to say that <laughs> probably done. All right, that's the one time I'm gonna say I'm gonna say no no chance no chance. That, that's done. when you can't control. It. There's nothing you can control. Okay, yeah, that's the only that's the only time you can't control this. I don't think there's much you can do there unless you okay. you didn't say nothing about your feet, right? Unless, unless you can kick on the door. Okay, I'll just I'll just ask. Okay, I'll just ask you. So, so Bailey, I'm I'm really curious too. Like, why? Like you said, like why? I want to know why you decide to still continue to play football. Why you are going down this path when you mentioned earlier, you had some other job offers that could be you know financially, you know. It put you in a good position, yeah. um, but now you're in a position where you are in control of nothing right now, other than your body and staying in shape. Just financially, there's nothing. There's no support. There's no nest. There's no nothing under you to to, to protect you. Yeah. Um, from some people, they could look at it like kind of risky, but you see a vision and 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 where you're gonna go, and and you know where the the end the where the end of the path is going to be the the, the the where the journey is going to take you yeah. um so i just want to know why are you still you know pursuing this pursuing i think it? uh i think you know yeah blind faith is a big thing that you have to have in the pursuit of any dream if you can see the summit if you can see the goal if you can see um like truly see it right in front of you why are you going to work super hard to get there if i can see that you know the thing that i've been looking for is right next to me well, I just have to reach. I don't have to reach as fast as possible, you know. But if I have no idea where it is, I'm gonna I'm gonna flip this place upside down, All right? Well, if if I'm if you're too focused on the goal the whole time, um, you know, you, you we talk about it like with football, you gotta love the process, and the process of my life right now into getting to where I want to go is fun. I enjoy it, you know. Like I don't I don't work. I get up. I go to the gym. I get to go punt. I'm currently at my friend's house right now, um, setting up canvases for him to paint on. He's a painter and I wanted, wanted some help. So these are like back here. So this is big canvas boards. I've got to gesso them and, and, and get them set. Um, you know, but just doing these like little things and, um, you know, people, people always are so focused on like, uh, on the money, you know, like where's the money going to come from and all that sort of stuff. Yep. And, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a real good thing. If, I truly, I'm, I'm a big believer in like, if you are doing the right thing and treating people the right way, they're going to look after you. I've had so many people support me over the years um, because they want to see me succeed and they want to make sure I'm in a position where I don't have to go, you know, go work and, and do things like that. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm able to, fortunately now because of my visa, um, I'm able to work, uh, but, you know, going through college and stuff like that, like that was always like a, a really tough time and, you know, to really rely on people and, and lean on people, um, you know, but I've also been in a, a spot like if people that don't know college football and stuff like that, probably that, like, how does he do it? They don't understand you're getting a stipend check and all that, you know, like you, you have money coming in. Um, but I don't anymore. So it's like, if I don't, if I'm not doing other things, like I'm not working um, like I'm now uh, a little bit here and there, you, just, you know, you, you can't even pursue your dreams like at all. 
Um, but what I'm getting at is like people have such a, a like a monetary focus all the time. And I, th- and I think there's a lot of like, you see a lot of like artists, they don't have that and they just kind of do it because they love it and they'll give up everything just so they can do their art. Say so what? Like, especially if you take an, an example, like being a painter, you can't be poor and be a painter. Like paint is expensive, you know? So you have to figure stuff out, you know I mean? You got to figure it out. Like, um, and if you love something so much, you're going to figure it out. So if you could take that passion towards your hobbies in the same way that you would, you know, into your career and things like that. Like, I just think it's an absolute no brainer. Um, you know, we, we was talking about like the different job offers and things that I have on my plate right now. And it's like, you know, these people are, are, are fighting to get you because, you know, as athletes, like we understand like the process and falling in love with the process and not just the overall outcome. Um, Cause when you think about like, like work, like what is the outcome? The outcome is to retire. Well, if that's the case, like you're not going to work very hard, are you? Um, Cause you know, you're, you're going to work your nine to five and you're going to get your 401k. And when you, when it's time to, you know, time to be done, you'll be done and you'll be set and you'll be all right. Or you could take the, the drive and passion um, you know, that we had, you know, f- through football or have through football and take that into the work life. I, I just thought about this, but like, not naming any names, but like I can think of a player on our on our team, uh, Bryce, that uh, wasn't. No one would look at him like he's a very good player, uh, backup guy, and you know, just a bit of a um, a bit of a kind of just go with the flow kind of type character. Somebody you would be like, he's not going to be very successful compared to everyone else, but because he was there for three, four years, whatever it was. And he learned the work ethic of what it means to be an athlete and, and, and be someone um, who's kind of in love with the process because he didn't get to play any games, he had to love the process or he wouldn't have done it. Now he goes into the workforce and I know that I think a month or two into working, he was already up for a promotion over some people that were there for over a year or two because he worked so hard, you know, yep. little things like that. I can think of another guy. I don't think we talk about the same guy, but I can think of another guy. It's a very similar story. Dude is, dude is very successful right now. Very yeah. successful, right? Didn't play much at Toledo. Went through a lot. But business is booming, baby. You know what I'm saying? Because he understood the principles. And he took that stuff serious. And he controlled what yeah. he can control. He didn't play that much. And he still showed up every single day. You know what I'm saying? Gave that attitude. Gave that effort that he could control. Um, yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? That stuff take you, for, take you forever, man, for life. And, you know, you're talking about all of this stuff about doing what you love, man. I'm just thinking about AC, man. You know what I'm saying? Even what we doing. This is a nonprofit. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. We we didn't we made this, we made this a 501 C3 for a reason. You know what I'm saying? It's not for the money. It's because we love to do it. You know what I'm saying? We know money's gonna come to us at some point, but that's not what we're doing it for, right? The only money we might get is literally our our pay to work, like our hourly wage. Like that's all you can pay for nonprofit. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? the part that we love ain't the money. It's more so the process. Like you said, like me and Jovan get on calls every single day, just about, you know what I'm saying? It's supposed to be five minute calls turned into 45 minutes. We just talking, talking business. We talking AC, we talking how we can make it better. Cause we love that part of it. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with my job as a counselor. I go to work every day. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to go above and beyond. My principal just told me, she was like, yeah, here's the newsletter, right? Somebody else is doing a newsletter. Uh, make sure, you know, you plug in some stuff that you want. Bro, I already made a whole website for the counselor alone. You know what I'm saying? I got a counselor's website. You talking about add my little bit on a on a newsletter. Man, I got a whole website. You, you can plug that in maybe, right? But it's because I love the process, man. I love putting that work in. It's just it's a part of me because of football. Yeah. And then my last comment, man, just towards what you said, bro. Like, me and Jovan was just why I just had sent him um something. It was one of the Instagram reels, man. Just kind of t- it reminded me of this whole conversation and what Jovan had asked you just recently was like never compromising. Right. You know what I'm saying? Never, never backing down for something that you really stand for. Why are you still doing this? Right. Why, why are you doing this? You talking about how many, you got this purpose. You know what I'm saying? You love the process. And I was just thinking about Eric Thomas, man. And Eric Thomas, there was a story that we just watched and Eric Thomas turned down $10,000 because they made it. They, they asked him to wear a suit. And he had already accepted. He accepted. He was like, yeah, yo, C. He called his boy C, his uh, assistant or whatever. He was like, yeah, C, book it. You know what I'm saying? We we definitely, that's a lock-in. 
quick 10K. You want me to speak? That's easy. They called C back. It was like, yo, we we love them. We love them. But this is a corporate meeting. You know what I'm saying? That we want him to speak at. So only thing is, he just got to wear a suit. C like that. Say less. I, I'm going to call him right now. He called E. He was like, can't do it. That ain't the brand. That ain't the brand. It's going to be more money in the future. That ain't the brand. I We are a hip, we are a hip hop preacher. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop ain't suits, so we ain't doing it. So they skipped, they turned on the whole thing. And the most powerful part is when C said he called the lady back and she said, So you mean to tell me you're about to turn down ten thousand dollars because you got to wear a suit? Bottom line is they they turned it down. And it's only because it's only because um he he believed in himself, he had that blind faith, right? He understood, man. I do this now, I'm jeopardizing and I'm compromising what I stand for. I'm compromising the brand. So I'm gonna pass this up now. I'll be rich later. You know what I'm saying? So like you said, man. That's what I'm doing now. Easy. It's easy if it's right here. And that 10K was right in front of uh, Eric Thomas's face. Instead, he said, nope, I'm about to grind. I'm about to just stick to the brand. It's gonna be more opportunities. And now I look at it. Literally the best motivational speaker in the world. Yep. So I just thought that was hard, man. A good connector too. Uh, to what you said too. You got anything, Joe? I know you was about to say something. Oh no, I had nothing at the moment. Okay. Um, so Bailey, as we close off, man, just a couple more things, man, that we want to pick pick your brain off of. And it's more related to you, you know what I'm saying? So right now, you know, it's easy to be in your head right now and feel like you kind of limbo in life. It's easy to do that, but you ain't doing that. You still grinding, you still pushing right you're still pursuing the process but you got this whole other side of your life that you know what i'm saying i want a little some people to hear about man hear about your art your your love for the arts too you know what i'm saying and i think a lot of people get it misconfused or get it confused especially you know when you were in college like some people were like oh bro like is he a football player for real or is he just doing it you know what i'm saying because he low-key looked like a theater guy he low-key looked like he's trying to take off with music but you a lot like me right Man, if you if you capable and able, you willing and able, you might as well do it. You know what I'm saying? And that's something that you got a passion for, right? So if you got a passion for it, I don't blame you, man. You know what I'm saying? We had plenty of conversations about that. That ain't got nothing to do with you and your love for football. You love football. You know what I'm saying? That's something yeah. that you, that's your main priority, and I get that. So uh, I guess my question is, what's your next steps with, with with the music stuff? You know what I'm saying? What can we expect? What's your next steps with the acting stuff? What can we expect? And how are you balancing both with football? Yeah, so like a big thing is like anytime somebody sees that you're pursuing something else, especially within the arts and you're trying to do sports as well, they're like, oh, what are you trying to do? You trying to be a football player? Are you trying to be an artist? You know, like what are you trying to do? You trying to be an actor or this or a musician or this? I'm like, I, I can't do it all. Like, why, why can't I do both? Like, I'm I'm just pursuing both. People go, oh, well, this, you know, you have to put you have to put so much time into like this one thing. Like, okay. How many, how many Christmas albums do you have out? Yeah. How many songs? How many Trigger, songs do you have? Trick or treat, trick or treat, might be broke. Hey, right? hey, what? Yeah. Like Thanksgiving, like Thanksgiving. How many Thanksgiving songs you got out? <laughs> but like, Real though. and then people want to be like, well, like it's so hard to like do this. I'm like, yeah, you're right. It, it is so. It, it, might, it would be really hard for you to to juggle all that. I did it whilst I was playing football and going to school. Like, there's, if there's a will, there's a way. Like, we played Fresno State in 2018. We got back at 5 o'clock in the morning at 11 a.m. that day. We got, like, everyone got the day off because it was we were back so late. We had a long week. Well, I had rehearsal at 11, from 11 to, like, 5. And then I got to go home, and then I got to sleep, you know, again. So, like, I was dead. And then that week was – the show was opening on a Thursday. Yeah. We're playing on Saturday. Like – or it, we ended up playing. So it was like we played the, the following Tuesday or something like that, the way it worked out. So it was like I go through the week of like trying to come back from this this Fresno game, like get my body back. And I'm I'm acting all week. And then it's dress rehearsal and it's this and it's that. And then we have a game. And then after the game, the next day I've, I've got um, a show again, you know, like the these different things. And so I'm able to uh, bounce all these things, but it's because I loved it, you know, like I, I, I mean, I still love it. But like I love doing theater and, and things like that. Um, I was able to go to Russia and completely leave football for you know a couple months 
in 2019 and then come back and still play really well because although I was there acting and going to school from 10 to 5 every day and then staying up till 2 o'clock in the morning getting ready for school the next day, I was in any spare time that I had, I was doing ball drops in the bedroom from my punt stuff. I was stretching. I was working out. I was doing leg swings. Couldn't really punt anywhere, but I was still getting my work in. I was fine in a way like because I love it. You know, like I love doing both things. Yeah. You know, you, you are the master of your own mind. Like, so control what, you know, you put your focus into. I wasn't putting my focus into things that are wasting time. You know, so it's, yeah. you, you don't realize people want to be like, oh, you, it's so hard to get all that done. You don't realize how much time you waste. We got so day. much time in the world, man. Oh, now me personally, I ain't gonna but, lie. I don't, I don't waste no time no more, big dog. And now I'm at the point where I don't, I really do feel like I don't have time. But at the same time, it's like, that, that also, we had another episode, man, and this kind of piggybacks off of no excuses. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gonna make time for what you want to make time for. And that's something else you can control mm-hmm. is your time. You talking about, okay, yeah, can you control literally time? No, you cannot reverse time. You can't speed up time. But you can control what you what, what energy or what you want to put the time into your energy and what energy you want to put into your time. You got plenty of control over that. You want to put energy towards, you know what I'm saying, football? You can put energy towards football. You want to put energy towards, you know what I'm saying, your rap career, your music career, whatever it is, you can do that. You want to put energy towards girls, you could do that. You want to put energy towards just watching Netflix, you can do that. That's the problem is people, they get caught up, man. They get so caught up in, I don't got time. Or looking at you, like you said, I don't know how you, bro, how you do that? How you be balancing all that with all this time or with with such a little time? It ain't little time. I'm just maximizing every single minute. Every yes. minute. Yeah. And, um, you know, so that, that's kind of been the biggest thing that I've, you know, biggest conversation point that I've kind of spoken on when talking about doing so many different things. Um, but then also uh, for me now, you know, like what, what is what is happening now? Like what is the, 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 the pursuit of all this and, and, and that, you know, I'm continuing football. I'm still training. I'm still going to the gym. I still love that, you know. And I, you know, I have a, I have a date set in my head that if I don't feel like I'm, I'm making it by then, I'm, I'm going to, hang up the cleats like i know i know what it is but also at the same time i've I've found that like that might not be it might happen sooner it might happen later you know like you just got to really assess day by day like you got to be present you got to be where your feet are you know like that is uh what's the i think it was in like kung fu panda he said uh yesterday is history tomorrow's mystery yeah but today is a gift that's why they call it the present what I tell you, right. Jovan? I told you it was from Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> we just talking about that quote. That's our favorite. That's our favorite. <laughs> Let's talk about it. I told you it was from Kung Fu Panda, bro. Listen, that's a I banger. was from Kung Fu Panda too, but I don't go back to them. No, nah, that's a banger. None of them. That's a banger. so true, though. Yeah, it's so so true. Great quote. That's like one thing that my great grandfather told me. Um, you know, he was like, "You have to be present. You have to be present in everything that you do because if you're yeah. not." And his example was because he was in World War Two. He's like, if I wasn't, if I wasn't present with my family, what would I be thinking about? The people that I saw killed in, you know, on the Kokoda Trail. Looking in the past. Odd that I had to go through there. And it's like, that is like super intense. But the same way that he doesn't want to think about those things happening, why should we think about conversations we had last week with people that pissed us off? Right. You know, like Control the controls. Yeah. I'm going to say it again, man. I said it just last week because our guest last week said the same thing about, uh, you know, living in the present. Okay. I was joking last week, but no, real life, like, I really, like, in one of my songs, like, to my own horn, I really said that, though. Like, that's a fact. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, I, I literally said, lately, only thing I've been focused on is the present. And then the only time, no, only time that I'm focused on is the present. Someone told me looking in the past bring depression and the future brings anxiety. So take that as a lesson. Cause that's facts. Yeah. You look been to, you look in your past for too long, you're gonna start getting depressed. Whether it's cause you missed the past or cause you hate the past. One way or another, yes. you're gonna get depressed. You look in the future, you're gonna get anxious in a good way or a bad way. You're gonna get anxious because you can't wait for it, or you're gonna get anxious because you don't know what's coming next. That's why it's it's more peaceful. You get more tranquil tranquility by just staying present. Staying with what you got. And that's something else that you can control. Where your focus is, where your yeah. mind is. And guess when you start focusing on the present and the or on, on the past and the future, guys? 
when you're wasting time, when you don't have much going on with your life. You ain't got nothing going on right now. So you got no choice but to look back at the good times or the bad times, or you got no choice but to look forward at what it could be. Why don't you just focus on increasing your day schedule, increasing what you want to do every single day. And that, guess what? You're going to have no choice but to focus on the present. So with all of that said, I think we can close this, y'all. I think this was a great episode, right? I think we right at that hour mark. Okay, I'll use that every every episode, Bailey. We do like a 15-second takeaway at the end. Usually okay. we use that for like reels. Maybe we use it for our intro um, when we post it on Instagram or something. So um, that was my 15 seconds, right? We'll, we'll just use that. Yeah. But Jovan, Bailey, I'll let one of y'all go, man. If y'all got just a 15 to 20 second, you know, summary of like what you want the listeners and viewers to, to hear and take away from this. That'd be great. Yeah. I'll, I'll say something real quick. Um, one book I would like to recommend is the power of now. It's a great book about embracing the moment and everything that you just uh, spoke about Bryce. Um, the biggest thing I, I took away from it is Bailey's process and, and understand what his vision is. Um, Cause we are, I'm Philly in Philly right now. We, we always say trust the process, Joel and B, but I got that from Coach Rule, and the biggest thing with Coach Rule is um, you have the process, which leads to the plan to win, and I can clearly see and envision how Bailey's process connects to his plan to win long term and how that plan is going to help him pivot for anything that comes his way. So, I mean, good luck to you. Uh, it was a pleasure meeting you too, Bailey, um, and I, I really appreciate you joining the show. You got anything, Bailey? Any I would just away? say like kind of like a, a like you said like a bit of a wrap a wrap up you know understanding and perspective are two of the, the biggest things that are going to help you control the controllables realizing that you have as much control over the weather as you do over somebody else's opinion of you although you can guide you cannot control two very different things and in the end the best thing you can do at all times no matter what's going on is be where your feet are yeah, because if you're if you're present, that is the only way you can uh, you can truly change uh, your trajectory. Period. Ground balls only, man. You know what I'm saying? Stay on the ground. Stay stay level level headed. I love it, man. This has been a great episode, y'all. At the end of the day, y'all control what you can control. Guess what you can control though? Taking that next step up the mountain, climbing your butt off. You know what I'm saying? Right, man. Hey man, so we've been we've been throwing what you new can songs. Do in the present and... is uh, subscribe. That's what they can do in the present. <laughs> what can you control? You can control your attitude, your effort, and your ability that to hit like that button. that yike button <laughs> and that yub yai <laughs> button and that year button, aka the share button. No, nah, yes, but good. appreciate y'all, man. What song we want? Um, so we done did. We didn't did a couple of big bro songs. I think it's time we get some Flinley on there, man. Bailey, give me a song oh, yeah. that we should end, end this this podcast too. All right, yeah, all right, y'all. Like peace. It. It's gonna be playing right now. Peace. You don't know. to wonder what she did to make it move back down under high